Welcome to Enshrouded. I am so looking forward to this new playthrough, and after putting a bunch of hours into the demo and the closed beta of this game, I can honestly say it was one of the best, if not the best, survival building games I have ever played. So with that said, I am so looking forward to seeing all the new content that's been added with early access out now. So sit back, get cozy, and enjoy the first episode here. First off, I gotta say the game is running really smooth. We have our settings here, and I've gone ahead and just done some display tweaks that I think will be good, but we may end up tweaking them later down the road. But let's go ahead and hit play, and we start off straight in our character creation here. So let's pick, let's see, that one looks pretty nice. Lots of great options here. We've got hair. Let's go with this one here. And then hair color. Let's go with that. That's pretty clean. Beard. Hmm. I like that one a lot. And then beard color. So this is pretty simple and straightforward, but it's clean. I really, I really like the character creation here. Nothing too fancy, but... Oh, this is cool. We've got voices. I think I like this one. This one's nice. So let's select that. Click next. And there we go. We can go ahead and name it Chisel Chip. There we go. And click create. Perfect. Now we can play. We can either host or join a game. So it's very easy, similar to Valheim. And you can obviously privately host a server as well as uh, having public server hosting. So let's just go ahead and click a private game, create. And let's go ahead and edit it. Let's just call it Ember for now. <laughs> for Ember Vale. And if you guys have any uh, suggestions in the comments for what we should name the world, because we will obviously be playing a lot of time in it, uh, then let me know down in the comments. With that said, let's go ahead and click play and dive into the adventure. Long ago, a wanderer brought an enthralling gift to the people of Embervale. The elixir. It was a cure. A blessing. A weapon. Once concealed by the ancients, its might had been set free. With it came power, mistrust, and a longing for more. Humanity dug the elixir wells, ripping apart the land and each other to quench their thirst. Elixir and blood, a drop for a drop. But from the depths of the wells, an unforeseen curse crept into Ember Vale. The Shroud. A ruinous fog which sought only to spread and devour. Facing their downfall, ancients and humans united to forge the Flameborn. Now, your time has come. Awake. Alright, that was incredible. That definitely was not in the closed beta or the demo, so that gives us a little bit of background here. That was a- that was an awesome cutscene. Alright, now we are awakening from within the vault here, where we went into hiding, or I guess hibernation, from the Shroud. And it is now time to reclaim the world. So right off the bat, the controls are super smooth. With DLSS now in the game, we get really good frame rates. This is just buttery, such a nice experience. And it looks like if you played with a bunch of people, uh, you would all spawn in in these pods here. So, let's get started. The Cinder Vault. Yeah, so this is the place we've been kept for so long. Alright, commune with the flame. You've slumbered for too long, Flameborn. The realm of Embervale has fallen, consumed by the Shroud. Now the Enduring Flame calls you. Find a place in the ruined world and construct a flame altar to create shelter from the dark. Okay, and there we go, we have unlocked the flame altar. 
So right off the bat, before we reveal the open world here, let's just go over some of the initial controls. We have Alt here to switch between two hotbars, so I'm probably going to have a uh, combat and then a crafting hotbar. And then you can see here we have some quests that are happening, so we can hit J for the journal here and view all of our quests, craftspeople, we've got the tutorial over here. So right now we have claim a spot for your base. There we go. A promising site to establish a flame altar is marked on your map. Reach the location to proceed. And we can show this location by pressing F, so that is where we are headed. And then up here we also have our... Let's see, our world here. This is our map, which is huge. 64 square kilometers, I believe. So it's absolutely insane, as you can see. <laughs> and then we have our crafting here. So all discovered recipes for this crafting station are saved here. Uh, you can quickly navigate different categories by selecting the icons over here. Here you can find the requirements and ingredients for each recipe. And then you can pin recipes to get notification once you have collected enough ingredients to craft the pin recipe. So that is really nice. So right now we have our flame altar unlocked. We have our backpack here. So that's what it gives you by default. Our character as well. So we have all of our armor slots, as well as glider, grappling hook, magical rings, backpack extension, shields, ranged weapons, awesome stuff like that so you don't have to worry about it taking up a bunch of slots in your backpack. And of course the amazing skill tree here, which has so many different directions that we can go in. So that is awesome. Alright, so with that taken care of, let's reveal the world of Enshrouded. This amazing, absolutely stunning environment. Every time I walked into here in the closed beta in the demo, I just got chills. I still do. This is so incredible that they're able to make a game like this with terrain that's entirely customizable to be able to build hobbit houses and pathways and cliff dwellings and all sorts of insanely crazy stuff. So I am so excited to get into the building. It's just the type of world that just makes you want to build makes you want to explore by putting you in at a high vantage point here. So many cool spaces over there that I'm so excited to go check out. So let's continue on the adventure. We have to reach the plains, which is where we build our first base here. Alright, a vast world awaits you, filled with secrets and peril. Press I and navigate to your map to track your discoveries. Okay. And then we have the little journal pages over here. Let's click E to read. Let's go through all the lore here. We actually get experience from reading these, which is really cool. So the alchemist's theories. Okay. Pure light engulfs the knowledge of the ancient breed. Protects it in a flame core. Wisdom far beyond my own imagination. I could stare into the fire for hours, seeking answers. A whisper. But I hear none. Despite possessing a voice, it only speaks to those born from the flame. A shame, as I believe we could have quite enlightened conversations. <laughs> Balthazar, alright. So these will give a lot of the lore and history of the world here. And experience, so they're worth clicking on. So it looks like we make our way down here. And we've got to go through a cave. We've got a nice little pavilion here. A couple of starter stuff, some bandages. Let's see what's in here. Nice, alright, so we can press spacebar and take whatever is selected, or we can just press F to take all. And I'll probably want that torch for the cave here. Here we go, another torch. I'll just collect everything for now and we'll see what we end up needing. There we go, our inner flame lighting the way. <laughs> so yeah, let's just explore this cave for a little bit, see what's in here. This looks pretty cool and spooky at the same time. Ooh, okay. Use a terraforming tool or explosives to forge a path through the rubble. Explode powder balls. Es explosive powder balls can be thrown. Explosive barrels are detonated at range. Okay. So here are explosive powder balls, it looks like. And this is so much fun. All right. So I think we can just... Yeah. <laughs> we just left click and completely dynamite our way through the terrain. That's awesome. Okay. And we have an extra little secret room back here. A chest. What do we have in here? Ooh, a hatchet. That looks really nice. We have cutting and blunt that it does. Alright, yeah, I definitely want to take that. 
And we have another journal over here. Nobles and History. Drinking song. <laughs> Ode to Pike Mead. Alright. So there's the drinking song. I suppose I could try to sing it. <laughs> but you could just pause the video now if you want to read that drinking song. Uh, that's fun. Okay. Let's continue along our way. Yeah, I'll try to read a lot of lore uh, on screen. And then things that I don't read, I'll at least try to click on. Then y'all can pause the video to be able to read them in greater detail. Uh, if there's a bunch of stuff. So let's see here. It looks like we continue this way. And there we have the shroud. Here we go. The flame allows you to resist the shroud, but if you linger, you will perish. Escape the shroud to replenish your maximum time in the shroud. Okay, and another torch. So, let's just pull out the torch here to light the way. And we are enshrouded, so five minutes until we die. And then if we just escape it here, we regain that five minutes. So, that will reset. Alright. Press tab to lock onto your foes. Press control to dodge out of harm's way. So I probably won't be pressing tab because I just like it more freeform. But there we go. We can dodge and attack. And it looks like we've got something up here. Alright. These guys aren't too bad. Ooh! What is that? A rusty short sword. Well, that looks pretty nice. <laughs> Alright, and some cloth. We unlocked the bandage recipe. Okay, I should probably be using my hatchet for this, but the torch definitely works as a uh, early game melee weapon, I suppose. Ooh, there we go. Shroud spores. We unlocked a glider. Oh, that'll be exciting. Okay. I feel like we have some more stuff in this cave, though, too. I just want to be sure we got everything. Because, uh, yeah, with the secret room, with the powder balls and everything. So, sometimes there's lots of, like, little secret locations. Yeah, so here's one. I see a chest back here. So, game definitely has lots of amazing little story elements. Because it's a handcrafted world and not procedurally generated, you'll definitely have a lot of hidden secrets and uh, little tidbits throughout the game that are worth checking out. So, it's going to be a lot of fun. Alright, and then it spits us out down here into the open world again. And we come across the return beacon. If you fall, you will rise again at your last return beacon. Alright. And we unlock some new stuff there. Amazing. Okay. And it looks like now we just start gathering resources. Got plant fiber, berries, twigs. Alright. Nice. Ooh, we've got a little, uh, a little beehive up here. Let's go ahead and harvest that. We've got honey and wax. Interesting. And it looks like that, that didn't sting us or hurt us. But we'll see. Alright, and then yeah, harvest and eat berries to replenish your health over time. It will prepare you for the dangers ahead. Alright, so... Let's get some more of these berries. And let's go into my backpack. And it looks like we can click on the food. And yeah, plus two health regeneration. Nice, and the mushroom plus one intelligence. Very cool. Oh gosh, we have a wolf over here. Let's use the hatchet. Let's try to block it. Ooh, we didn't quite block it in time. Alright, so I think we can just hold right-click to block, but then if we click it right at the right time, we can, uh, we can parry it. So, ooh, there we go. Bones. We unlocked a wand there. So here we go. Reach the plane. So I think this is the spot it wants us to go, where this big beacon is. Okay, there we go. Location reached. Claim a spot for your base. So now, do I have another journal entry here? Yep, here we go. You don't have to place a altar in the plains. You can choose any above shroud location to establish your base. Yeah, so you cannot place a flame altar in the shroud, but anywhere outside the shroud you can, as of now anyway. So there we go, we have to craft a flame altar. So let's go into crafting, and a flame altar requires five stone. And we also see all the other things we've unlocked so far. Torch, the wand. Let's go ahead and craft that since we're at it. Alright. And that wand here, let's just see what that does. Is it in my hotbar? There it is. Alright. So that looks like it's a, it's a very close ranged weapon. But uh, that looks like it does like an ice damage. And I bet you if we click on it, 
or hover over it there. Yeah, ice damage. There we go. 11 damage. So let's get to gathering some stone then to craft our first flame altar. And I think I'll do a lot of building in the next episode. We will try to build a uh, starter house, which I'm really, really excited about. So we'll just get to gathering lots of resources. Ooh, we've got little mountain goats over here. Let's see. Here we go. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So we got the mountain goats, and that gave us animal fur. Cool. So, uh, let's see. We should have enough stone now to craft ourselves a flame altar. And I will put this in a better spot eventually, but for now I'm just gonna lay it down uh, in an arbitrary spot right here uh, just to complete some of the quests, and then we'll shift around its location for building our starter house next time. So commune with the flame. All right. You are not alone. There are other survivors drowsing in nearby ancient vaults. Find them, so they may aid you in your journey. Go gently. One beckons nearby, just outside the shroud's grasp. Okay, cool. And there we go. We can upgrade our altars, strengthen the flame, which increases our altar capacity, and our time in the shroud. And, uh, yeah. Reset skill points as well. So anything that you put towards skills, you can, uh... Ask the flame to reset your current skills and refund your skill points to be able to put them towards something else. Which is really, really cool. So there you go. That answers that question. Uh, but yeah, and then if you extinguish the flame, then everything uh, within this flame boundary uh, will be, like, consumed by the shroud, essentially, and reverted back to normal. So any modifications you made, anything you build, will disappear after a few in-game days uh, or when you reload the map. So with that said, we have another journal entry, uh, which is Find the Sleeping Survivor. The world is lost, but not barren. Survivors of the Shroud wait to be roused by your inner fire. Find the sleeping survivor marked on your map. You will have to venture through the Shroud. So there we go. F to show on the map. And there it is. Find the sleeping survivor. So we probably won't get to that today. I will probably end up going into the Shroud, though, just to try to see what it's like, gather some resources, things like that. But this is just so exciting. <laughs> I really, really can't wait to dive into this game and do so much building, adventuring, all these amazing locations out there, just waiting to be explored. I'm so excited. All right. So yeah, I'll just keep gathering some stuff, and let's see, what can we start crafting? If I go here, a workbench. There we go. We need some stuff for that. We need wood logs, and we need string. Okay. Is there is there an axe? Can I build an axe? There we go. I just need some string for an axe. All right, let's craft a string, and let's make the axe there. Perfect. And, ooh, 18 damage. All right, can we punch trees? Always got to check. Yep, you can, of course, <laughs> but only three damage. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves some of these... These wood logs. There we go. And resin. Nice. Okay. We unlocked a shield there. So, uh, let's see here. A workbench. We need three more string. Perfect. Okay. Let's go ahead and craft one of those. And let's see here. How did I crouch? Okay. C is crouching. Perfect. That's good to know. And there we go. Some of these controls are a little different from the way they were in the demo. Okay, so you can hold E to pick it up, or you could just press E to craft, and all your items will automatically be prepared every time you press E. So that's awesome. So we've unlocked rough stone blocks and rough wood blocks, plant fiber roof blocks. So you can see it's not that grindy. We get a hundred of these every time we click it, so it's not too bad to get resources. But we'll definitely need a lot of these for our starter house. And then I also wanted to go into the shroud to get some resources in there. But let's go ahead and make a construction hammer as well. There we go. Wooden window frame. That's awesome. So let me go ahead and organize my hot bars here. Go ahead and put the construction stuff maybe in this one. And let's see. Let's put the combat stuff in that hot bar. Okay, perfect. So now I can have my crafting hot bar. So the construction hammer, you can see that when we want to build something, we have this nice little boundary here. And anything outside this boundary will not be saved, essentially. Anything inside this boundary will be saved. 
and this boundary will expand a whole bunch as you upgrade your flame altar or place more altars, obviously. Look at that beautiful sunset. <laughs> the graphics in this game are going to be so nice. This is just so cool. All right. So yeah, we can press tab to enter building mode. There we go. Select the shape you want to build with. Select the material you want to build with. And then open the submenu to select from different shape categories. Perfect. So you can see we can control and scroll wheel to build out of wood or stone because those are the only two we've found so far. We can then press Alt and be able to scroll through all sorts of different blueprints. Uh, assuming we want to use blueprints because you can also just place like block by block, which is really, really awesome. And we'll go over a lot more building in next episode for sure. So uh, don't worry about that. Let's see, what else can we do here? Let's go into crafting and it looks like, ah, a campfire. Yeah, let's go ahead and make a campfire. Let's place that down, because I'm assuming we need that to cook some stuff. Yep. To cook food. And we get rested from warmth. So there we go. Place your food in your action bar, select it, and press the left mouse button to cook. Okay. So it looks like we can roast some mushrooms. So, oh, there we go. That's probably done. Yep. Alright, there we go. So we have cooked mushrooms, and I'm guessing that just probably does a little more. Go ahead and eat that. Yeah, okay. I really, really like how playable this feels at nighttime. I like that the torch isn't too overpowering. Uh, it gives just a nice soft light to everything. So yeah, definitely well done on the graphics side of things. So let's go back into our crafting menu here, and it looks like the next thing we should be crafting is a pickaxe, which just needs another string. So there we go. Pickaxe. And there it is. So yeah, anything outside of this boundary, I'll just go ahead and uh, start pickaxing the ground. We get dirt from the surface area stuff, and then as we dig deeper, we get some stone. And this is a much faster way of getting dirt and stone than just collecting the little stone pieces. And then yeah, in a few in-game days, that hole will be filled back in as if it was never there because we're outside of our flame altar boundary. So that's pretty cool. And then that can be used for the terraforming, of course. So if we go back into our hammer here, tab, and then we can go into our blueprints. You can see all the terrain blueprints down here as well. And for these, you can use stone. You can use the dirt. If you use the stone, it'll look like stone. And then if you use dirt to build the terrain block, it'll grow grass on top of it. So all sorts of cool stuff like that. Uh, and then, of course, you can just place it uh, block by block. If we scroll all the way up here, and then we can scroll through. And there you go. So you've got the single roof block, single terrain block, stuff like that. All right, so there's some other cool stuff out here. We have fireflies. So we just unlocked the firefly lamp, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, the vibe of this game, the cozy feel, this is just amazing. I'm, I'm really, really excited. And we have another one of these little guys over here. All right. Oh, we parried it. There we go. Perfect. All right, so that's how the hatchet does, it looks like. Go ahead and take all of those. And let's see, any other recipes now that we have the pickaxe? We have a club. We just need some wood logs. A staff, interesting. A bow. Oh, this stuff looks great. So yeah, let's go ahead and gather resources for those. All right, there we go. Back with some plant fiber and some logs here. So let's see. Looks like we can go ahead and craft the club there. Oh, that looks clean. That's a nice design compared to what it was in the demo. Yeah, that looks cool. Okay. So just to have a variety of weapons to start out with, just in case certain enemies are weak to certain weapons, which I'm obviously assuming that'll be the case. So, looks like it's getting slightly brighter out now, so I'm guessing morning is just around the bend. So let's just collect a few more things. Maybe craft a bow, and then do a little bit of exploration during the day. Alright, here we go. We just need one string for the bow, so let's go ahead and do that. And craft a bow. Perfect! And we just unlocked wooden arrows by doing that. There we go. Let's just go ahead and make a couple of those, since we have the wood. And then it looks like we have the ragged shirt unlocked, and we just need three string for that as well. So let's go ahead and craft that. I guess it's better than nothing. Does physical resistance and some magic resistance. 
So that's cool. We can just head over to the backpack, right click it, and equip it. And there we go, in our character. Awesome. Alright. So it's better than nothing. That'll get us through the next day. And I think with that, we are pretty prepared on some basic weapons here. Let's just go give them a good repair. And then prepare for daytime. We also have here the glider and the grappling hook, which it looks like we have to get into the shroud to be able to make those. So maybe we make the glider today. We go into the shroud to make the glider. Uh, so that'll be something maybe I'll do during the daytime. With that said, let's head back up here, because I think, yeah, there's a big village over here. And I'm curious to see what this is. Alright, this is Long Keep. Awesome. And it just gave us some XP. Ooh, and we got a level up from exploring it. Oh, this is awesome. Okay. So there we go, an extra skill point that we could spend towards something. So yeah, let's definitely go ahead and do that. Hit H, and let's see. Here's the double jump. I definitely want to head in that direction. So let's do an endurance here. Awesome, and then we have to save up again to get the runner, and then it looks like we can do double jump after that. Wow, this is just so cool. Okay, so we've got that there, and you can see if we press our map as well, Long Keep is now marked on our map. We can also uh, fast travel between our flame altars, so you can fast travel to uh, the Cinder Vault, and that is automatically a fast travel point when you spawn in. So we can fast travel between these two and any other flame altars or things that we discover throughout the world, so that's really convenient. Alright, with that said here, it looks like we have a well. Water is a great source of vitality. Drink it to enhance your stamina and regenerate faster. Alright. So let's go ahead and grab a bunch of water there. And there is no water in the game just yet, but they may end up adding it in the future, so we'll have to see about that. So I'll just go ahead and gather all of this. The well will refill in a couple of days to be full again. So I may as well have quite a bit. There we go. Just emptied it out. And let's check this area out. This looks pretty cool. Alright, collect those. Let's kind of start from the top and work our way down. I'm right up here. Yeah, because I'm seeing we've got some stuff, some journal pages and everything. So, yeah, it looks like this is the start of it. We enter while clipped with a shield or melee weapon. Press right mouse button to block. A well-timed block will parry the attack. So there you go. We can uh, right mouse button to parry the attack. So that's cool. Okay. And then, yeah, continuing this way. Let's just pull out a torch so you guys can see a little bit better. Gosh, I love the lighting. <laughs> and my graphics aren't even maxed out just yet, so... We also have beds and things like this, which we can sleep in. Uh, we don't have warmth, so we can't really get a rested buff unless we have that. Um, but I don't think you can sleep through the night. Uh, at least not yet. So, I suppose we could try that, but I don't think you can sleep through the night. I think you just get all your buffs by laying in a bed. So there we go. It is morning now, with a nice sunrise. Let's head into this area. We've got another water here, and another journal page. Here we go. Captain's Journal, Day 1. Hold the chamber to your last breath. These were the words of the Ancient One, before he entered with a handful of our best warriors. It was the first time I'd seen one of his kind, and I expect it will be the last. His face is burned in my mind. My life and those of my remaining soldiers are pledged to his sacred duty. Captain Arkwright. Okay. So yeah, hold the chamber. I'm guessing that was the cinder vault. So we've got little things like wood scraps and stuff over here. So many little cool things to explore in these villages. Yeah, down here, another chest. Wooden arrow, bandage. All right. Yeah, this is so cool. There's just endless exploration here. It looks like we have... Oh, nice. They give us a little fire right here. So we can automatically just cook our things and get a little rested here. We've got some meat right there. Perfect. All right, let's see how this works. Let's drag our meat into my combat slot there. And let's see, see if we can cook it here. There we go. Perfect. Grilled meat. And let's drag that back into my inventory. Go ahead and eat it. 
Increased maximum health. Nice. That actually increased it by quite a bit. Some more water there, and another journal. Alright, a good night's rest. Finally a break from the tedious work. My bones are sore, but the warmth of a fire, a little shelter, and some sleep should allow me to become well rested. Food is getting scarce. I hear they're planning an expedition. Thankfully I hid some rations below my bed. They will make for a nice meal when cooked over a fire. Alright, so those were the rations that we just found. <laughs> That's really cool. Alright, anything in here? Yeah, just so many locations. These areas are just rich with exploration. Little areas of shroud within them. Looks like we have something there, but we gotta get rid of this guy. Let's try the club out. Alright. Oh, they can block as well. Ooh, ouch! Okay. Let's use a bandage there. That hurt a bit. Okay, that looks like it does a lot. That's good. Alright, let's see here. Falling to ruin, we held out hope, digging through the rubble, our lips whispering prayers to the ancients, always a watchful eye toward the horizon. Even in this furthest corner of the world, the shroud threatens to engulf us and seal away a ray of hope. As the air grew thick with the cursed fog, we held on, as fires raged on the horizon, ash falling like snow on howling pike, we pushed harder. May this home, long kept, usher us into the bright age. All right. So there we go. And I killed a few more of these things. Another rusty short sword there. All right, cool. Ooh, we've got something taking damage over there. We've also got little rooms in here. Ooh, this doesn't look so good. So much history. This is just insane. I could have episodes upon episodes of exploring. Ooh, metal scraps. That's cool. Okay, we unlocked a lockpick. What is this? Ooh, okay. Exploding plants. Interesting. Ooh, and a chest behind it. And that is where we need the lockpick. So let's go in here. What do we need to craft a lockpick? We need two metal scraps. Okay. So it looks like I can't craft it just yet, but we have another journal page down here. The shroud looms. The blue jays no longer drift so carelessly through the air. Something is changing. A nebula flows toward us, spring from the abyss like a tidal wave. They call it the Shroud. It carries disease and suffering, changes soil and people. I must understand this madness, but discovering a remedy will be difficult, with supply lines cut off by the soldiers. Another one from Balthazar there. All right, so yeah, we need another lock uh, or another metal scrap to get a lock pick to open that. So I don't know if we'll find that, but we're getting a little low on our timer there. So let's get back into the <laughs> back into the world here. All right, so yeah, that's just a little taste. Ooh, we've got like a rabbit, a dead rabbit over here. Perfect. All right, let's go into the shroud while we're over here. Now would be a good time, and there's some more of the rabbits there. All right. Lots of raw meat. Alright, that's always good. So I don't have a ton of food, but alright. More little camps here. Interesting. Another page here. Captain's Journal, Day 6. The raiders have besieged us these past two days, attacking from the bridge. Their eyes such madness. We have withheld thus far, but only just. We may not survive the next assault. I have ordered the rig to pass with our last munitions. If those scavengers return, we are prepared. Captain Arkwright. Okay. So that's probably why the bridge has been destroyed. Because, uh, yeah, they had to retreat from the scavengers. Okay. And was there any chest over here? Anything? Yep, there was a chest. Always on the lookout for those. Ooh, okay. So it looks like my backpack is currently full. So is there anything I don't need at the moment? Or anything I could consolidate? Let's go ahead and try to toss out one of these short swords. But I think we can also right click and salvage it. So that gives us runes, which we can then use to upgrade other things and other weapons. So I don't really need any of these because I think I like the hatchet better. So we'll just go ahead and salvage those. So now we can go ahead and take those, because that health potion looks like something we really would like to have. Alright, into the shroud here. Oh, another journal page. There's probably going to be a lot of these up front, so bear with me. 
These first few episodes will be a little more uh, lengthy, but I figured it'd be nice to have some uncut stuff so y'all can kind of get a sense of how the game works. Here we go, the Captain's Journal, Day 20. We are hungry. We had to destroy the bridge. Yep. And with it, our connection to supplies. Okay. But it worked. We haven't seen any more scavengers. The Cinder Vault and those within it are safe, and should remain so. If we are to avoid starvation, we may have to take our chances in the horrible shroud. Either choice is certain death. Alright. Oh gosh. So yeah, I'm going into the shroud. Wish me luck. <laughs> Stay on the path, lest the Shroud's kin take you. Salvation lies straight ahead. I think the Shroud wood is from these dead trees here, though. So I bet you if I, uh, let's go ahead and hit Alt. Switch to our crafting hotbar. Yeah, I bet you if I cut these down. Yep, there it is. Shroud wood. Let me just eat some food here. And that will, uh, replenish some stuff and empty it out of my inventory. So here we go, we can loot that, and there we go, we unlock the spiritual cane. Interesting. Ooh, we can loot these as well. Shroud liquid. Ah, okay. More rocks and things, and a little camp down here. What do we have in here? Let's let's switch to the combat hotbar, because I definitely see something. Alright. Okay, we blocked that one. Oh, he blocks that, alright. Ooh, I didn't quite parry it in time. Ouch, ouch. There we go. Okay. Okay. Combat's already getting a little difficult. And there we go. We get runes from these. Ooh, a magical ring. I really, really want that. So, uh, let me actually, let me do something first to empty out a slot in my inventory here. Let's find some more of those things. Yep. Let's, let's do that. <laughs> that is so satisfying. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, my timer is getting a bit low. So that's something I wanted to touch on over here. Let's get that ring that I couldn't get before. Because I really wanted to see what that does. So, 8 stamina and 8 health. Awesome. So we can go ahead and equip that. We'll get some extra buffs there. Okay, so this is... This hourglass capsule replenishes your time in the shroud. It's consumed upon use and cannot be stashed in the inventory. So we're getting low on time. Let's go ahead and restore time. And there we go. Looks like it gave us an extra three minutes or so in the shroud. Yeah, so let me just go get some more shroud wood, and then we'll head back out of the shroud and see if we can craft the glider. Alright, so we're headed back to craft the glider now. I should have enough shroud wood. Uh, I have, let's see, I have 14. So it's not a lot, but I think that'll craft the glider. And our stamina's getting kind of low, so let's try to drink a water here. There we go. 128% now max stamina. That's nice. Ooh, we've got lots of these, uh, lots of these mountain goats over here. Let's check out the bow now that we have those. So there you go. There's tab. We can lock onto our target. So that's an option there. All right. All oh, right. I can equip this. Uh, there we go. Is it in my character? Yep. There we go. So it's equipped, but it still takes up a backpack slot, but it looks like we can press Q as a hotkey. Oh, and I love the aiming here. This is, like, really nice. Oh, gosh, not quite. There we go. Perfect. Okay. That's fairly straightforward. But it's so nice that, like, we could have our axe or our club or something, and then just press Q and instantly access the bow, or, again, just access the club. So that's really nice. All right. Got another wolf here. Okay, so let's go ahead and craft the glider here. Crafting and glider. So that has to be done at the workbench. The more important things have to be done at the workbench here. It's spacebar. Perfect. Okay, there is the glider. So let's go ahead and equip that. And there you go. In the character, it's equipped. And we can just activate that by essentially pressing the jump key twice. Uh, and that works. Or three times if you have double jump kind of a thing. So that'll allow us to get down into the shroud a lot quicker, which is really, really nice. All right, so with that said, I'm going to wrap this episode up. I think we made it a good way through the game today. Getting a solid inventory, getting our feet set in the game, getting our character created. So I do hope you all enjoyed this episode. I really can't wait to dive into building in the next episode. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned for that one. 
I'd also love feedback about episode length and things regarding the episode in the comments below if you have any feedback there or questions or anything. And with that said, be sure to subscribe, join the Discord server through the link in the description, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.